Okay, this question is from short, short right uppercut. Uh, your question is, um, you coach, you are coaching in boys indoor futsal, and their ages are 12 to 18 at a boarding school. Uh, the question is, what, what are some things that can help them um, grow and develop? Um, so the answer is, it depends how much time you have, right? Because if you have, if you've, if you've got enough time to do, to run practices, oh Christ. Okay, if you got, it, it, it depends, yeah, it depends on more logistics and gym size, but like, in my mind, there are two ideal, ideal practice, practice sessions. It also matters how much time you have on them. So you can actually combine both of these two, or you could set them up, um, you could split them up. So the first one is, this is, a, this is a skills and drills routine I got from this trainer out of New Jersey. Um, I started going to him when I was the worst player on my team, and the next season I scored more goals than the whole team combined. And the, and the pattern is as follows. It goes warm up, ball skills mastery, Dribbling sequences, barrel game, and then 1v1, 1v1 play, knocking over each other's go cones with a size one ball. All right, so warm up, self explanatory. Ball mastery, I'm talking cover, C O E R, V E R, uh, dribbling, dribbling ball mastery moves. Or you could do, um, you know, a lot of resources, a lot of resources online. He also has. Right, he has an iOS app, or he's got a Android app, or just search Cover. Right, he's got a track record for um, great foot skills. So that's that's step that's step two. Right, warm up, ball mastery. Then next is dribbling sequences. The one that he taught me that if you could only learn one, this is what it would be. With your right foot, you go outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Then the last touch comes across your body, and you do it again. Outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. That last touch again, across your body, then start again. Outside, outside, inside, outside, inside. The reason why this is so effective is because it's easy to memorize, which means it's easy to execute. And once you once you commit it to muscle memory, it becomes a building block. You can combine it with other moves and it's like a, it's a foundation, right? So you go outside, outside, inside, outside, scissor, or outside, outside, inside, outside, chop, or inside, outside, outside, inside, outside, step over, or L move, right? So it lays down this groundwork that's gonna allow a player who's decent, who's just average, so either poor or average at dribbling, really accelerate their dribbling skills very fast, right? So that's, that's steps two slash three. The third is barrel game. You can use buckets or um, garbage bins. Um, and you just have, I used to have a, my whole middle school team, I only had one barrel. So I put 20 plus kids, I put the barrel in the middle of the field and I had all the kids line up on the outside, the on the, the on the ring of the, of the 50, at the 50 yard mark. And all of them would, using your right foot, your left foot, both feet alternating, right thigh, left thigh, both thighs alternating, and finally finishing with any body part you want, combination of feet and thighs. You have them juggle into the barrel, and it's a lot of fun because they're bumping in, into each other, and it's like chaotic, um, and uh, you can encourage them to use a bounce if they're not that good at juggling, but this is the next game we'd play, and it was, I look forward, I still play this game to this day, um, and I teach to everyone, everyone I can. The last game, we had rows and rows of, of landscapers barrels, and you might not have that, but I still, you know, I did this with my, you know, I do this with every single team I coach. You just put two cones a distance apart and have players knock each other's cones over with the ball. So it's, you know, you're rapidly transitioning to offense to defense. It's just a 1v1 game. And you know you're working on shielding, you're working on ball ball mastery. So that's a fun game. The next thing that you can, okay, so that's that's the skills skills and drills player development. That's one section. So you could do that for one hour, and then you're gonna go into this next part. And you could also do this next part independently. So you gotta play around with it, whatever you think. 
this next part is I got from I got this next part from Coach Doug Nevins, who was Gatorade Coach out of the Year out of New Jersey, and his training sessions would have the same format, and it looked like this: warm up, possession, finishing on goal, crossing and finishing, and then um, crossing and finishing, and then playing to big goals, playing to big goals. He'd split the team up into three teams, and then the, the team that was sitting out would be on the outside as bumpers. Now, if you're playing in tight areas in futsal, the one thing that you could remove from this is crossing and finishing, and you could go from you could go warm up, possession, and go straight into playing to big goals because you're not you're, you're not going to have as many right. Futsal is more quick play, boom, 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 boom you know, finish or counter, quick counter and finish. So I think um, you're gonna get some of that crossing, that crossing and finishing from your, from your possession games and indirectly from your possession games and also directly from the three team, three team scrimmage on a tight, in a tight area. You wanna condense the field a little bit so that there's rapid shifts from offense to defense, right? They're going, players are going from attacking to defending from 50-50 balls and if players don't defend, right? Boom, quick off. Then they have one touch. The team that's out off, again, has one touch as bumpers on the outside. And having them as bumpers on the outside um, allows them to be engaged. And you want three teams because if you just have two going against each other, it's not as competitive. If there's the, if there's the, the, the fear and the, if you want to be king of the hill, right? All the players I play with, they love playing. So you want to uh, be king of the hill and just win, win out so that you never have to go, go off. So um, for possession, you can do um, either two team possession. You could do three team possessions. So one team in the middle, right? Monkey in the middle with three different teams. If you got pennies or shirts and skins, whatever. You could do, you could do gates, gates around the field and players got to pass through gates to score points, and then it's best team to three, best team to five. And with those two patterns of training, you can have a super fun training tr training session. That's, that's what you want to do every single time. Ideally, um, well, you got to be a judge because you, you got to be a judge of if your players are so poor that they need to really hone, f sharpen their skills, or if you guys have a dedicated practice session, or if you have enough time to do both, then you could um, you could do both and squeeze that into like an hour and a half, hour forty-five. Because w warm up, warm up, you don't need double warm ups. You could just remove the warm up from the second part, and um, the only thing that's super high intensity is is playing to goal. I mean, possession gets intense, but it, it, you know, your effort is, is coming in waves. It's replicating a, a soccer game. So, you know, it's not that unreasonable to have a low intensity. Um, it's not unreasonable to have that low. You, you could get a lot of touches and have a lot of fun. And I think that thing, the, the skills training flows right into the gameplay. So that's what I would do every single training session if I could. Either one of those, right? Either one of those or both at the same time. So uh, reach out again with any questions and uh, thanks for your time. All right.